Hi everybody, it's Mrs. T, and this is going to be a quick video on aim number six from the Moles and Stoichiometry Unit. And aim number six is for formulas. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Mrs. T. I'm a chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School in Merrick, New York. And first of all, we have formulas that are called empirical formulas. Empirical formulas are going to be our reduced formulas. So these are going to give us the lowest ratio of atoms to each other. So all ionic compounds are going to be shown as empirical formulas. And when we do our crisscrossing and dropping the signs, and when these numbers are equal and opposite and we cancel them, we are getting them to the lowest whole number ratio, which would be the empirical formula for an ionic compound. CO2 would be an example of an empirical formula because there's one C for every two oxygens, and one to two is a lowest ratio. H2O is an empirical formula because two to one, two and an understood one can't be reduced anymore. But for C6H12O6, the six, the 12, and the six can be reduced to a one, that CH2O would be the empirical formula for C6H12O6. When we're talking about molecular formulas, on the other hand, molecular formulas are going to tell us the actual number of atoms of each type in a molecule. So for something like glucose, there's actually six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens all connected to each other in a molecule. So for CO2, one to two is the lowest ratio of the atoms, but there's also actually one carbon and two oxygens in the molecule. So CO2 is actually both an empirical and a molecular formula. And for water, there's actually one oxygen connected for every two hydrogen atoms. So this is an empirical and a molecular formula because it's the lowest whole number ratio of the atoms, but it's also the actual number of atoms in a molecule. When we're finding the empirical formula from the molecular formula, all we have to do is look and see if the subscripts can be reduced. So again, a six, a 12, and a six can all be divided by six. So the empirical formula would be C H2O, because remember the ones don't need to be written. For C2H4, the two and the four can each be divided by two. So this would be the molecular formula, whereas CH2 would be is what's in the molecule. It can't be reduced anymore. So this one is both empirical and molecular at the same time. And finally, if you want to find a molecular formula from an empirical formula, you have to find out how much we need to scale up the formula by from the empirical formula. I'm just going to move this. I just realized this is in the way of the question. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. So if we want to look at this first question, it says that the compound has an empirical formula of CH and a molecular mass of 78.0, and they want us to find the molecular formula. So the first step is going to be to find the mass of what's in the empirical formula. We're going to do that the same way that we did it for um, finding the gram formula mass. So C on the table is 12.0, H on the table is 1.0, and that is a total of 13 for the mass of the empirical. Then we're going to take the mass of the molecular formula and we're going to divide by the mass of the empirical formula. And when we do that, we're going to get a number and in this case we get a six. So since the molecular formula is six times the mass of the empirical formula, we're going to multiply the subscripts from the empirical formula out by six so that our molecular formula is C6 H6. So this would be the molecular formula. And when we do the gram formula mass of C6H6, it will have a mass of 78, so that matches. 
for a compound that has an empirical formula of CO2 and a molecular mass of 44. Going to do the same thing. We're going to find the mass of CO2 the same way we did gram formula masses. Uh, remember in our class we rounded to the nearest tenth and it says that CO2 has a mass of 44 and the molecular mass is 44 as well so that means that CO2 must be both our empirical and our molecular formula. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about formulas. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to Extra Help. Bye-bye.